Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Hour of Code, uh, Flappy Code, Code Drum Flappy Game. Uh, you'll notice I've got my screen at a very low resolution uh, because uh, your students will probably be on Chromebooks with a very low resolution. Um, I find this particular uh, coding exercise to be very well suited to second graders um, who may or may not have a lot of computer literacy at this point. It's a great introduction to uh, block style programming uh, without overcomplicating things. It's a very linear process and it gives them the code blocks they need and just the code blocks they need for each uh, step of the instruction. And it is fairly forgiving for um, students who want to play around a little more and sort of do things beyond the instructions that they're given. Um, you can start the exercise uh, either by uh, playing the video for the entire class or letting them play it individually uh, with headphones. Um, for brevity's sake, uh, I'm going to switch to the show notes. Um, it introduces uh, events, event handlers, um, dragging and dropping, uh, the workspace, um, the screen uh, blocks and uh, sort of walks you through the things that you'll be doing throughout the uh, exercise. So we can close that. Um, at the top, you've got the instructions. They're highlighted. Uh, attach a block to the when click block. Press run. Click or tap the screen to move Flappy to the target. So one thing that students will have a lot of trouble with uh, often, um, click OK. Uh, down here is the, the Run button. Here it says Click Run to start the game. Here's Flappy Bird. And here's the target that they're trying to move to. These are the blocks that are available for you. And this is the workspace. What is in here is what will run um, or will be active when the game is running. Uh, so one confusion is click or tap the screen to move Flappy to the target. First they have to click Run, and then this area is considered the screen. The top left square uh, is the game that is running. So here it says tap or click, um, and one thing that students will do is they'll tap it once and Flappy will uh, fall to the bottom. Not quite. You have to use a block you aren't using yet. So two things. Uh, we did not add the flap block to the when click. Uh, we can also play the wing sound if we want to, um, or a smash sound. Uh, down here it says your code may have changed. Click reset and then run again. Um, because right now we can click, but it's not activating the code that's in here. So we need to reset, run again, tap the click, and now, still, they can fall down. It will flap with each click, but you need to click many times to flap to the target. They're trying to hit this target at the top. So click, 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 and we've completed puzzle one. Now we've added some ground. Attach a block to the when hit ground block to end the game. Now students will gloss, gloss past this. They'll see attach a block, and they'll ask what block to, to attach. And they won't quite read this next part. So I sometimes try to get them to read it out loud and hear uh, themselves say end game and then look in the blocks for end game. We'll drag end game to when hit the ground. You'll see the uh, little divots on the left uh, sort of snap to place. Uh, one thing students will sometimes try to do is center the block uh, on the other block it won't connect. You need to have the divots right near each other, and then you can let go and it will snap into place. Um, another problem students sometimes have with this exercise is they don't want to crash. They'll run. They've just learned that they can make Flappy flap and it wants to go up. So they'll click and click and click. They need to actually let Flappy fall to the ground to complete puzzle two. 
So when run allows you to run code when your game starts. Try setting the level speed and flapping to the target. So we now have the when run block added to our workspace, but we need to add the set speed block to it. And you can set any speed you want here and run. Note there's a target now at the top right. And so this is a little more difficult. They actually need to hit that target and they need to time when they flap in order to hit the target. On the bright side, the target keeps coming back. So if they miss it the first time, they can keep trying without actually resetting and hitting run again. So now Flappy will fly through obstacles unless you write code to make him crash. Attach a block to the when hit an obstacle block. Your code needs to end the game. Hopefully they remember end game means end game. When hit an obstacle. I'm flapping, I'm flapping. And you see the target on the bottom is another hint. Um, sometimes students don't like to lose. And so they will actually flap through the pipes for a while. That will uh, tell them that they have actually failed and they need to try again. They need to let themselves hit the pipe and fall down to the target. Now we're going to add a scoreboard. Uh, the game adds the scoreboard for us um, and count points when Flappy makes it past obstacles. So again, when past obstacle, score a point by flying Flappy through the first set of pipes. We need to score a point when past obstacle, and then they actually need to tap or click through the first obstacles. Uh, this can be hard if they don't succeed the first time it actually doesn't collide with the obstacles, so we can just let them practice until they eventually make it through one of the pipes. See if you can still score a pipe after making Flappy flap either a smaller or larger amount. So it has removed the flap under one click and given us the a different flap block and we need to try something other than normal. We can try very small. And I am now clicking a lot to make very small movements. Congratulations. Now we try changing the scene by attaching another block to the when run. So let's look at when run and try to find set scene. And And you can see that uh, it'll allow you to keep playing until game over. So if students uh, continue to just fly through the obstacles, they won't make it past the exercise. They need to eventually hit an obstacle in order to get past this puzzle. So now it says you can set visuals anytime. Uh, try setting a random scene when other events happen, for example, when passing an obstacle. Um, Another one you can do is just uh, when hit the ground, random scene. Uh, it's just looking for the set scene random trigger, so it doesn't matter where you put it, you can complete the puzzle. Now, uh, instead of ending the game, it says try setting the score back to zero when hitting an obstacle. So we could see when hit an obstacle, and there's now a set score block. We'll drag set score down to when hit an obstacle and click run. I didn't make it through that one. I made it through that one. Zero, one, zero. Uh, it's not obvious how to make this end unless you look at the code. Um, you still have when hit the ground end. So do that and you'll complete puzzle nine. Now, uh, this is sort of free play. Create your own flappy game, change all the visuals and all the rules, even gravity. Uh, when you're done, click finish to let friends try your game on their phones. This can also be a point where uh, kids can get up and share their games with other uh, students in the classroom. Um, 
it can be a learning moment to hear how other people are playing your game, what's fun, what's not fun, what's easy. Um, they'll have a lot of fun probably being silly. Uh, and you can basically um, do anything anywhere. You do want to remember that you need to set the speed at the beginning or Flappy will not uh, move forward. Um, the other place you could set it is when click or when hit the ground, but it won't work if you just do when hit an obstacle or when hit or when pass obstacle, because you won't be flying forwards. There won't be any obstacles. We can have random speeds. We can have random sprites. Uh, when passing the obstacle, we can have random obstacles. You can add play sounds all over the place. Um, you do need a flap when click. Uh, or you'll just hit the ground. And if you scroll down, you get set a normal gap, set gravity, and there's the set score again. So you can scroll down with uh, two fingers up and down, or you can use um, one finger and click and drag on the scroll bar here. Um, so we can set the ground to random every time you hit it, uh, and set the pipes to random every time you hit them. And then we can, when passing an obstacle, we will end the game. And let's see what happens. Run to start the game, tap to click. And we're getting random speeds. Congratulations, you've completed the final puzzle. Um, so you can keep playing, hit the X. If you finish, then you'll go to a screen where you can share the game, but you can also copy link to project here. So let's X, keep playing. Uh, thank you, and I hope you uh, have a great hour of code.